In today's episode of Behind the Vlog, we're in Ure, Colorado, here with Dewey Jones and Colorado Mall Crawlers. Let's go off-roading with Dewey. So we've taken this little spur up here. It's not marked in Trails Off Road or Fun Treks, but you guys get on corkscrew. Oh All right, guys, so we have taken this little spur up here. It's not marked on Fun Treks or Trails Off Road, but you'll see it uh, at the summit. Again. And it takes you up you to these amazing views up here. And this trail is just absolutely stunning. It's You're hard to, to put this stuff down into a video because I know I'm not doing it justice, but we're going to show you the rest of this and hopefully it's somewhat good. All right, we're at the top here, just hanging with the guys. Uh, just wanted to show you some of these views. This is absolutely incredible. Man, I feel blessed to be up here. Just check this out, guys. Look at this. All right, guys. All right, guys. So we've stopped at the summit, but Walter had such a great insight here. Something I didn't even know about. So let's hear from him. And he's going to tell you about something really cool that you can see from the summit. And yeah, to come up to the top of Corkscrew, uh, one of the first things I always look out for is that billboard over on Silverton Mountain on the right side of that range. Uh, actually, I skied there during, I guess, the winter of 2020, just a couple days before the whole world shut down. Um, it's a crazy little ski resort. There's one chairlift on that right face, and you just you take the chairlift up, and you got to hike anywhere else that you want to go around that mountain. And you can either funnel back down to the bottom of the lift, or take yourself down through that road in the bottom of the valley. And they just lap buses, and you just wait on the side of the road for a bus to come pick you up. Uh, but yeah, that's not really much snow left uh, this time of the year anymore. I honestly thought there'd be some some more patches up at the top here, but uh, yeah, real cool spot, and it's always cool to look at it in the summer. It's all mounted out. Well, that is definitely awesome. Now, you guys may not know, I have a secret skiing channel, and part of that is making some skiing guides. So, Silverton Mountain's on my list one day. I'm going to get there. Man, thank you so much. And definitely, you're going to see a lot more of him in this video, but you need to check out his Instagram because the stuff he does with his frontier is freaking awesome. Not your grandpa's frontier, <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's all me one note that this is one of those really amazing places to use a toilet so how was the experience <laughs> not what i'd hoped for <laughs> <laughs> we'll not be mailing a postcard home no i mean i thought about it maybe they like lost that over so that maybe they had issues with oh oh maybe yeah i could see a I mean, that was designed here late in the afternoon. Is, is the view. toilet facing that window? No, no it's right here on the Yeah, window. but if what I thought might be right happening there. there is happening there, it's better that it's not near yeah, the toilet. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> that is a good view, though. All right, Rick, hold up there. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't mind stopping in places like this, not at all. <laughs> I see him buzzing around over there. Here he comes. Dewey's getting a drone shot of us rolling by. I'm gonna try to keep this camera still so we can see it. We're under it right now. The view behind us. All right, Rick, hold up. You guys are gonna like these shots. These are worth the stopping and going. I might have Dewey, because then you get a chance to kind of look around. I appreciate that, yeah. The one hell. thing with these videos is why I stop and go. I think we're going to go. Sorry, I'm parking the snow. Dang, how cool is 
is this, man? Oh, I got some Jeeps parked out of there, too. Oh, yeah. And I believe this is the summit. The temperature definitely feels like it. <laughs> yeah, you feel it as soon as you drive into it. I know, huh? It's amazing. It looks like it's still frozen. It does, actually. Oh, I see some ripples down there. Man. Now we're looking over oh, really? at Lake Como. If you guys have seen the, uh, the wall video, I took my stock TJ Rubicon on the wall. And uh, I have another video coming that we've covered that too, but that might be out later than this one. We'll just have to see. But it's absolutely gorgeous. Even though, like a still, I can always zoom in a little bit. I mean, this stuff looks good on camera, but you know, you have to. Kind of How are you guys liking the trail? Awesome. Love it. Beautiful. Good. Love the views. Love the weather's holding out day. decent enough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I use that, but I am going to ask you guys during this video at times. I'm going to just be spontaneous and all that sometimes. I don't know if don't I've worry. ever seen an Alpine Lake iceberg like that. Yeah, oh, it's like yeah. pretty crazy. We should camp jump out. There. Yeah, jump out there on a get out there on a paddleboard. That's Poughkeepsie. I I still can't say that right. I don't, even know if I, said, I don't even know if I said Imogene right because I think That's I, I pronounced it. Is that how I said it in the video? Imogene. Yeah, because I looked it up before and I was like, oh, I got this one. So, but then when I was watching the video, I was like, was that right? Or I think it's Poughkeepsie, right? It's yeah, like, it's in New York. It's for like some reason, I can't say it. Yeah, New York. I've tried it. Well, like, in the yeah. town, on the way up here, I kept calling it Ure and Ure. Yeah, that yeah, one yeah, that's 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 that That one I'm yeah, good with. Yeah, yeah, that I'm one, good. for some reason, Ure just kind of, that's easier yeah. for me. <laughs> continue down yeah. that way and this hopefully find suck. camp. But I want to show you, if you do the little hike, yeah. go up a little further, you can get some get absolutely spectacular views. We're looking down Kipsky there, we got Lake Como. And I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous up here. Like, look at these rocks. We were talking about how it's very familiar with like Pearl Pass. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. But this is similar to Pearl Pass, and it's just, the views are spectacular on this one. Me. And I really hope that you guys are able to get here one day and see it for yourself. And before we leave, I gotta show you, that's Engineer Pass over there. We're gonna end there, and it should be pretty awesome because that's gonna be a great way to end the video, although we might get a bonus trail in, so that's up to the group, and we'll decide that later. Next adventure. <laughs> <laughs> He's got two good feet. <laughs> we're gonna get a shot of you using the crutches to scramble, now as a tool. I think I might, might just slide down on my butt. It's a new method. Uh, just top on my back, you'll be fine. Yeah. I'll carry you down like a backpack. <laughs> Man, this is so incredible. I'm surprised they have campsites real close to this because I noticed, I was reading up on this morning, they were saying no camping near historical uh, sites. Yeah, just looking ahead, it looks like 
there's um once we start on cinnamon pass you know once we get so once we get past animus forks here we'll be on the start of cinnamon and it looks like two or three waypoints in there's a campsite marked camping spurs there's apparently a camp spot way up there but it's way up there are you talking about like where that trail is that a tra no there's a trail over there i don't know where or you, we can't see it from this spot, but going into, that's uh, Burns Gulch. Mm -hmm. There's apparently a spot way up there, but there was a huge snow drift that I ran into. I gotcha. But it was almost to the top. I just, I should have flown the drone, but Trails Off Road says it's a great spot up there at the top, which of course that would be a great spot. It's gonna be cold though, mm -hmm. with how high up but it is. Harder, but then- Harder to get to the better. Yeah, there is two spots on, this little side trail over here, but it's kind of neat, but it's not, it wouldn't fit all our vehicles and it's a little bit higher up. Like this is safe for as many vehicles as we got tonight. All right guys, so we're on this little camping spur. We think this might be the camp spot. Now it's not one of the greatest, but we do have six spots, but the great thing about this spot is that view right there. The spot up there is pretty good, and the spot down there is pretty good, but there's someone there, but you can't see them from here, so that's pretty cool. So, this might work out for the big group. I think we're gonna have a better campsite tomorrow night, though. So is that one. Oh, the whole thing slid forward, huh? Is that resting on my cab? Dude. Uh-oh. Oh, oh hey, we gotta do a little repair work here. Can I get some here. hands? Okay. Yeah, this whole thing slid forward. Oh, man. So, um, this, these rails are supposed to be sitting right there. Front and back. And this is the bolt for the back side, and my whole tent is on my cab. Yeah. I think I've, I found one of them. I think if we just lift it and maybe, I think the whole thing is just shimmy. All right, so I think if we lift it and then pull it, yeah, kind of pull okay, it your way. All right, it looks like Walter is going to get some issues. Let's just see what's going on over there. Then I'm going to show you our campsite that has fit all our vehicles. So let's go see what's going on with Walter's Frontier. <laughs> Rick is going to be sleeping in his Ram like he did in the Lockhart Basin Trail, guys. If you guys haven't seen that one. That one was a pretty aggressive trail. And then you got us out here in tents. We have the best view around because look at this view that we get to wake up to tomorrow morning. That's really what sold me on this spot. But this is a camping spur. There's spots all along. We do have neighbors. It's all right, you can't really see them. Um, and probably tomorrow our camping spot's gonna be even better than this. But there's a good spot up there where you can look into Animus Forks. But I really, for some reason, this view right here just speaks to me. But I gotta get some beers in me and we gotta get food. Yeah, I've, I've been looking at those kind of, mm. those, those are, uh, Sweet rooftop tents, the mm. hard shell stuff. I was like, man, that's the kind I'm gonna get. But yeah, I think you like can lockable take, storage yeah. and the waterproof is so sweet. Man. But you can still take that into like bear country, right? Yeah, because if you yeah you could you could put the trash yeah. in the bed and then lock the doors and it's yeah. See, that's what that's my thought on why. That's the kind of rooftop tent I would want to go for. Mm. shot is the last one we're getting with the drone so we're just gonna get back onto the road
guys, we are at the summit of Cinnamon Pass. It is beautiful from the way that we came up, but it's really beautiful for the way that we're going to be going down. And we're going to continue on down because we've got to find camp, and I really wanted to show that to you guys. But before we leave, if you want to do a little hike, a little hike right there, we're not going to do so we'll use the first one. You have some good views here, but the views going in to Lake City, that's where we're going to be heading, and those are better than the views that we had coming up. So we're going to show that, we're going to continue on, and uh, I'm going to try to show it to you guys better than I showed coming up to this. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the view that that's the view from the camera. Oh wow. Yeah, alright. That's enough. I gotta land you. Exactly. We were talking about it. You ever land it? Are you that good where you can just land it while you're in the cab of your Jeep? No. Just like come through the top? I have never well that top's new, so I've oh. never tried that. I it doesn't see it doesn't like my hand, this one doesn't. Oh the sensors? Yeah. Yeah. That one worked a little better. Nice. Yeah, I haven't tried it. That's new, but uh, yeah, if you guys want to snack, whatever. I that's probably the most drone I'm gonna do, and that's the slowest portion of my filming for the rest of today. But we got we got good shots. Not yeah. I don't know if people care, but we got really good shots. Yeah, that's gonna look awesome. Yeah, those were those were some cool. Like I, I wanted to kind of finish it up but then I was like oh man that's a cool angle and then when I saw these switchbacks yeah I, I saw it hovering there it yeah good. I got it has all the switchbacks in there so I might use a clip of us on different parts of the switchbacks like in the intro and who knows but so if you guys look over here this is the result of an avalanche just take down all the trees in the area man intense I think everyone was able to get what they needed done. I got some fuel, I think a lot of guys did. Were you able to get the supplies that you were needing, Walter? For a small portion, $20 lock tight. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well now, we're gonna get everybody on the trail and our main goal right now is to find an amazing campsite. We're gonna finish Engineer Pass tomorrow, granted that we can actually get through it, but we're gonna get on the trail and see what, what we encounter out there. You like that spot, right? Should we follow you in? Yeah, this is pretty good, I think. I mean, you guys can come down and just find a place. Yeah, go, go really with Zach. But there's a good amount of parking in the end. There's like a little driveway area that we can kind of pack into. And there's a reasonable place to go. Actually, let me, maybe I'll walk in real quick and just make sure we can fit a couple of crowds in. There's so many of us. There's definitely a parking area. Hey, 
Just sure we don't have out. to back out of there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm short. I'll go in there and see. <laughs> Zach's in there though. Yeah. Yeah. And he said this might be it. He said it looks good. Zach's pretty critical, so that's a good. Thing. Yeah, I got high hopes. He's doing a, a time so, lapse set up right there. You kind of want your spit finished up at our campsite in Nelly Creek. I think it was a good one, but it definitely rained last night. But I think we all were able to stay dry. I was able to stay dry thanks to Rick's tarp, and then other people had tarps also. And I think most of us did not notice the rain, but we're all packed up. We're going to go down Nelly Creek, we're going to get through those water crossings. And then Zach and Richard are going to split up and head or go ahead of us and uh, kind of scout out the trail. They'll give us some information on it, but we're going to focus on filming it really good for you guys. So we're going to take a little bit more time. They need to get back to both Denver and Fubo. They'll be going down Nelly Creek with us, so let's, uh, let's go see what we got. We're just hopping in. This is day three of our adventure, but we're gonna get a chance to talk to Dewey right now. So excited for this. It's gonna be a great day. Check this out. Just hold back behind the water crossings when you get to them. Uh, I'm still making my way down to the first one, but we need to set up cameras. I'll give you a thumbs up on when you guys can go, but just stage behind the water crossings. And are we all the way ready to roll back? All right. All right, Dewey, hey, thank you so much for meeting up with me and doing this. Oh, dude, Matt, thanks for having me, man. I really I'm really excited it. about your channel. It's, I think it's always interesting to see like behind the scenes stuff, so. Right, you yeah. know. Although I will say my behind the scenes is very uh, chaotic, so. <laughs> no, I think, I think we've both been having a lot of fun with this. Uh, if you guys don't know, hey, we've been doing this for a couple of days already. Finally getting hey, into three. this. Three days. Um, so yeah, tell me about your channel. Actually tell all of us about your channel and, and, and what you do on the channel. So I, I've always made videos, uh, mostly for my friends, and I had a small little channel where where I just made videos of stuff that we did. But I kind of had the idea, I wanted to show people these trails and show people you could do these trails in less built vehicles. Because in the overland off-road community, everyone was spending so much money trying to build a massive vehicle. And I would end up doing these trails in stock Jeeps and not spending a lot of money. And I don't want, I didn't want people to think that you actually had to spend a ton of money to see this stuff. So I figured, I'd start making some trail guides and that's what we did and people seem to like them and the channel has slowly grown over the years. It has, definitely. How long have you been doing this now? Um, I think three years maybe? I'm not really sure. I started it right before, I started in 2019, so whatever, the uh, four, it's four or five years. Yeah, then. at least. Yeah, oh. man. It, time flies. Time it, fe fly. it feels like it's only been three years. But uh, yeah, it's been a few times. I don't produce a lot of videos because I work a full-time job. So it's hard for me to get videos out. But you know, we try and make the best videos that we can. And you know, I think we're, we finally made it to a hundred videos. Oh man, Matt, there's a water crossing I'm gonna have to film of the guys. Oh, fantastic. So let's go cross that. All right. And then we can maybe continue this after. Yeah, I was gonna film it from the other side. I might walk across it or... Dewey's setting up a shot right now. Here come the guys, they're coming down the hill. And uh, we're gonna see how Dewey sets this shot up.
photographer who's not afraid to get wet right there, my friends. This is who I've been riding with the last couple of days. Commitment right there, my friend. That was great. Yeah, I already got my feet so <laughs> oh. What happened? Was it All right. Have you had good luck with the GoPros? So, I've had good luck with the GoPros. The GoPros are, you know, you have to know how I use them. They are a super small camera with a great picture, but that leaves to problem or there's problems with using them because you're getting such they're they're maxing out the picture in that small frame size or that small form right. so you know i just i take into account that sometimes there's going to be failures but i've had failures through the time and usually i'm pretty good at checking it beforehand as long as you check it beforehand you can usually correct it and unfortunately at that last water crossing i did not check it before but that's okay well, the joy sometimes of uh, doing filming is you can always replicate it. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. And we had two different angles at least, so. All right. Uh, what cameras on. do you normally shoot on? What what do you have? Like, I've seen you shoot so far on a uh, on your phone, on a couple of GoPros. Um, you have this GoPro here on a selfie stick. Which... Yeah, so I've come up with a system. I have a GoPro Hero 10 as my trail cam. That's the camera I hope to use the least. I have this GoPro Hero 11 with a uh, media mod. It has a good microphone, and I use that for narration now. This is to help with editing, kind of keep files separate. We used to shoot all in one, and it just made things a little bit tough. And then this is for inside the cab shots, outside shots. Um, with a GoPro higher risk. I also have a few other GoPros. I just only brought three on this one I use my phone to get some outside shots. I'm also learning how to shoot on my uh, Panasonic GH6 which is a micro four-thirds, but it gives really great video I just haven't used it a lot because I don't have it mastered and I really need to work on mastering it before I try to put it out there because I'm trying to get people the best video that I can make for them you know, with the best image in addition to giving trail information out there. So I'm, you know, I'm an amateur, so I'm just trying to learn new skills as I go. And then I use um, a couple drones. I have a Air 3 for like high altitude situations that's from DJI. And then I use a Mini 4 Pro for other situations, like mo that's my daily driver drone. Right. Um, it takes really good video, it's small and it works really well, and it has good uh, obstacle avoidance, so theoretically I could fly it in these trees to get some kind of like 
moving tripod shots. So, but I'm just learning as I go. You do a lot of the editing yourself, right? I do, but thankfully I have one of my buddies who is the best editor I know has uh, started helping me out because I work all the time. And like, I'm always working on the channel, but it takes us quite a while to actually get videos out because of my schedule. So Drew, he, uh, he's, he's the best editor and he has a little bit more of a normal schedule. So he's able to edit a bit more than I can. And I'm very thankful for Drew because he is an incredible editor. He's teaching me stuff. It's kind of fun having another editor uh, on the team because we keep, you know, uh, brainstorming ideas back and forth and uh, you know learning new things from ideas that each of us have. All right guys here we are with Drew and uh, I really appreciate you uh, getting together with me here. When did you meet Dewey and uh, how long have you been editing with him? So I met Dewey actually on the trail uh, about two years ago. I want to say two three years ago. It's actually in one of the videos where it was the Yankee Hill video where I actually was stuck on the trail. His group actually came upon me stuck and I was actually already familiar with his videos and had watched a couple of his videos and that encouraged me to really kind of take my relatively stock vehicle out. They ultimately ended up helping me get unstuck. Okay, we're off in the side while we figure out what's going on. Did it a little too wet? Battery light still on? Yeah. Uh, oh, I bet your alternator just got wet though. My alternator is at the very bottom. That's convenient. Oh, okay, that's probably it. Just gotta let it dry off basically? I, I think so. Yeah. That kind of provided the first introduction and then started going on trips with him and helping out with the filming. And then after more and more trips, I offered to him that I had a little bit of experience editing because I know a lot of his kind of backlog had been like, he had tons of footage, but not necessarily the time to edit. Offered that to him and that all kind of started, I want to say the actual editing started last year, last spring. And the first video that I edited for him was the Peak 10 video. What'd you think of the trail, dude? It was great. Had to roll back a few times on some of those switchbacks so but it was fun nice hey guys i'm coming to you from 2023 i'm a little bit under the weather but i am now full timing in this off-road camper and i can't wait to show you what it can do as well as everything else that we're going to be doing in 2023 it's going to be awesome but i wanted to let you know we have found our video editor and it happens to be our fellow mall crawler drew now, you guys saw him in this video, you've seen him in previous videos, and you're gonna see him in future videos. And I saw the rough cut of this video and I was so impressed with it that I was like, Drew, do your thing. And so I'm probably watching this final version that you're watching now live with all of you. And I was so impressed with it, but it really doesn't matter what I think, it matters what you guys think. So let us know down in the comments what you thought of this video. But I am really excited about the future of this channel now that we have a video editor and I can focus on other things like coming up with great trails to show you guys in both Colorado, Utah, and maybe some other places. All right, back to the video. I'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Now, do you just edit for Dewey or do you edit for other content creators? Uh, I don't edit for anyone else other than I have my own YouTube channel that I've done some like time-lapse painting videos for. Name of the channel changed to Drew Hunter Maker and Artist because I am I have a ton of different hobbies and interests and I have projects that I plan to put on that channel in the future. I have a plan to make my own teardrop camper that I'll probably film and put on that. Drew's the main one that I edit for right now. I really enjoyed. I just finished editing uh, the I'm a Gene video. Um, okay. But I also really enjoyed uh, the Blanca Peak video that I finished. That one was a bit of a bit of a chore because I was sifting through about 13 hours of footage. Wow. And right now it's been about one video a month. I'm hoping to be able to get it down to like two or three weeks. But mostly it's just there's a lot of footage to sift through and then also still sifting through my own schedule because I still work full time. Now, not to put you on the spot, but uh, this, this vlog that we're in right now, that I'm with Dewey. Any idea on when that might come out? Uh, we'll see. Depends on when he gets me the footage. Hopefully sometime this fall. Can we see? Yeah. Yeah? Here, let's come around here. Let's take a peek. Yeah, so I'll actually show you. This is some of kind of the behind the scenes of actually the, the imaging video. Oh, great. Um, why I did some of the editing. So this is DaVinci Resolve just on the edit page. Um, but you can see kind of where there's 
the A roll, and then also adding in the different text, um, but also where we'll add different text boxes, and then at times there will be the A roll footage and the B roll footage on top of that. So, but nice thing with DaVinci is that you can also go over and do all the color grading in the same program, and then also do any effects that you need to within the Fusion page. Oh, that's great. Can we get a sneak peek? Uh, the current project that I'm working on is actually a Webster Pass. Let's see if I can pull that up. And fun fact, this is actually, I'm remoting into my desktop at home. Oh, okay, yeah. Because this laptop would not have enough power to power actually to do, do all this, all this editing. Uh, but yeah, this is actually going to be for Webster Pass uh, Handcart Gulch, which will be the next video that I'm editing right now. So, let's see. Is any good use? But this was actually on a day that we were filming three other videos. Um, so we actually filmed Peak 10 the day before and then Middle Fork and North Fork on the same same trip basically where we were trying to tie in pretty much this was like 48 hours that he had off work that we were trying to oh, squeeze it in multiple trails yeah. into. so that's great thank you drew for uh, for meeting up with us and uh, and showing this little cutaway that we just uh, saw what you do we appreciate it wow it's gorgeous Recording good. He's getting some shots here on the on the GoPro. He's it's kind of challenging with driving. Oh yeah. You're trying to make sure, but like in the edit, I just don't want to show that cam the whole time. Right. Because if I show that cam the whole time, it's boring. I mean, the trail is beautiful when you're driving it. Like, there's nothing. I don't want to see when I'm driving it, but to watch it on a video, that would be boring. I think so trying to have just some varied ideas and varied shots and this low shot I try to get is to show people what the terrain is really like what okay. what you know how big are the rocks how are big are the rocks on my tires so oh there's a oh. little guy he's just hanging out oh, see ya. yeah but and then I got this new Sunrider from best top and it's Hopefully let me get good shots of these guys. I don't know what kind of angle. I don't know what it looks like. It's the first time I've tried doing this. So it could be a complete waste of uh, effort, but we'll look at it in the editing bay after this video and see if any of these shots are actually usable. I will say it is a challenge, mainly because <laughs> I've smacked my head on the side of this thing a few times while trying to record. So, yeah, I can see how it's a challenge, especially four-wheeling. Uh, well, the real challenge for me, which I should not have done, um, even though I love driving manuals, it's having a manual and doing this is, is really definitely a challenge at times, especially on really tough obstacles where I'm having to do a lot of footwork um to make sure the jeep climbs and video making always makes it a lot tougher um, when i'm wheeling without filming i look great out there but sometimes when i'm wheeling and filming i look like a complete newbie <laughs> hey we ran into some uh some of your fans last night yeah <laughs> some, some guys came by in a scout and uh they said hey we know who you are <laughs> yeah that was great. It, what was it, that like it's, I'm an introvert, so that was always a little tricky for me. Um, but, you know, like I've had, uh, every time I go out on trails, people uh, come up to me and it's, I, at first it was really weird because I didn't expect it. Um, but now, you know, like it's awesome. And I love that people actually like the videos. So we have another water crossing yep. a film, so. All right, guys, I'll let you know when I'm ready. I'm going to get the Jeep in position. Go pull it down over here. That should be enough for someone. I think so. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. 